Welcome back to another Quick Tip Tuesday. If you are in the same boat as Crystal, who asks today's question, you are going to want to pay attention. Crystal has a problem, or she thinks she does. She thinks that she has a black thumb instead of a green thumb. And she is wondering how she can follow the 2022 trend of bringing the outdoors in if she kills everything she brings in. (laughs) So we're going to talk to Crystal. We're going to give her some confidence and I have the plant for you. So are you in the same boat as she is and want to know how you can start bringing plants into your space that aren't faux plants? All right, take a listen. And then I want to meet your plant baby, so make sure that you send a picture and tag me over on Instagram at Fig and Farm so I can welcome you into plant parenthood. Enjoy today's show. It's Quick Tip Tuesday. You have questions, I have answers, and I am so glad to be answering them for you today. If you have a question that you want answered on the show, pop into my DMs on Instagram at Fig and Farm. Send me an email at figandfarm at home at gmail.com or join the Facebook group and ask there, bit.ly forward slash design 101 group. Let's hop to it. Let's answer your question. And if you find value in this, I'm sure someone else will too. So make sure you share with a friend. Danny, I wonder if you can help me, but I've been at this for years. Every time I bring a plant into my home, it doesn't last very long, maybe six months at tops. Am I hopeless? (laughs) Oh, Crystal. I think I have a black thumb rather than a green thumb, and I am convinced that no plants will ever live in my care. But I do know that you say that plants are a trend coming in for 2022, so I'm willing to give it a try if I know where to start. Maybe that's, that's the question, knowing where to start. Can you help me? Crystal, I do think I can help you, and I do want you to know that I don't think that you're alone. And I don't think that your situation is as hopeless as you think it is. And here's why. I think that sometimes as we choose plants, well, I guess I'm wondering if maybe the plants that you've brought into your home could have been the wrong choice to start with. Maybe you chose a an advanced plant rather than a beginner plant. And there are such a thing as that. So take, for example, all of these pretty pictures we're seeing on Pinterest, on Instagram, all of the shows we're watching on HGTV, and we're seeing all of the green coming in, and it's beautiful, and they're inspiring, and they look clean and fresh and lovely and wonderful, and then you go to the nursery, or not even the nursery, you might just go to Costco, you might go to uh, Walmart, or you might go to anywhere that is a big box store that they are selling plants. And you see some of the ones that are popping up in these pictures and you think, I'm going to bring them home. Okay, if that is you and you have killed one of those plants, I want you to actually take a second and forgive yourself because I don't think the problem is with you. I don't think it's that you don't know how to take care of it. I think that sometimes the plants that are put out in those big box stores are the wrong plant for beginner plant mamas. I do. I think that sometimes when I go by and I see some of these plants hanging out just in regular stores like Walmart and Costco, like I've already mentioned, sometimes when I see them, I just think, oh, you poor babies, you are most likely, I, you're most likely going to end up in the plant bin, going out to the curb, you're going to, you know, not be taken care of. And it's not your fault. Sometimes those plants are divas. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they they can be divas and they can be a little bit more time consuming to take care of. They can demand a little bit more attention than you're willing to give them. And just like anything you're learning new, you're wanting to grow in your skill, you need to start at the basics and you need to have success with the basics before you move on. And so Crystal, take heart. I don't think that it was you. I think it might've been the plant that you chose. And How would you know any different if they're there on the shelf ready to purchase? So here is the plant that I think that you should start with. And any of you who might be at the beginning where Crystal is, where she might think, you know what, I'm about to go buy the faux green plant. Don't do that. Buy this one instead. And I promise you're going to have some success. The plant I'd recommend you start with is the Sansevieria. Now that is the fancy name, but its most common name is the snake plant or mother-in-law's tongue, 
or St. George's sword. If you're not sure which one that is just by me talking about it, I want you to picture the plant that looks tall and spiky. It looks like there's a bunch of swords, like the shape of a sword, sticking up from the soil. That is the plant I'm talking about. And these are, if you browse Pinterest, if you browse Instagram photos, you're going to see straight away, you're going to see some of these plants. They look like swords. So why they got snake plant, I'm not entirely sure, but that is probably the most common name that it's referred to as the snake plant. So if you're going into a garden center, you can ask for that instead of the Sansevieria. It's a little bit easier to pronounce. But these are super, super hardy. They come from the deserts of West Africa, where it's really warm and where they don't get a lot of rain. And so you can imagine that these plants don't need a whole lot of water and they don't need it as regularly as we might think they do. In fact, they kind of thrive on a little bit of neglect. (laughs) Now, I don't want you to leave it for a year. I don't want you to leave it for six months or even three months without watering it. But The idea here is that you don't have to water it every week. You don't have to water every two weeks. You don't have to water it every month. In fact, if you did, you could be killing it because you're watering it too much. So what do you need to know about this plant? It can come in um, several different varieties and some can be really small, but the one I'm talking about right now is, can be about one to three feet. Um, Actually, it can be really, really big, especially in the desert. It can be eight feet tall. But most commonly, you're going to see about one to three feet when you go to the store to to find one and 18 inches wide or so. That's not too bad, right? It's pretty doable. Now, one thing you should know about plants anyway is that they can get root bound and they can get big enough that they stop growing because they don't have any more space to grow within their planter. So you can kind of control the size of it by just keeping it in a smaller pot. So that's just one quick tip on the side. But these plants, they really like indirect light. They would prefer that, but they don't need that. They can have full sun. They can do full sun just as well as they can do really low light. So if you wanted to try something in your low lit bathroom, like you have a teeny tiny little window, you could try the Sansevieria. You could try the snake plant. That will be just fine sitting in the corner in your bathroom. Just like all plants, they do, of course, need to be watered. And you want to water yours when it is mostly dry. The soil is mostly dry. You can generally see from the top that the soil is dry, but don't be afraid to get up close and personal with your plant. Put your index finger into the soil, and if you feel any wet, it doesn't need to be watered yet. If you feel all the way dry, maybe it is time to give it a little drink. There are two ways you could water your plant. So let me just walk you through each way and you can decide which one is best for you as you experiment. But you can bottom water your Sansevieria. What you would do is you would take out the plastic pot. Now, okay, let's, let me stop there for a second. I'm assuming that you have kept it in its black plastic pot that it came in at the store. And then you p- maybe placed it inside of a cute wicker basket with a drainage um, container at the bottom so that it doesn't get yucky in your basket. Or maybe you put it into a ceramic planter. But I am assuming that you have some drainage holes inside of that plant. I keep mine in in its plastic pot that it originally came in because I want it I want to be able to water it easily. So that's what I'm assuming. So when I say take it out, that's what I'm meaning. Okay, Crystal? So the first way you can water it is to bottom water it. And what you're going to do is you're going to take out that plastic pot and you're going to go to the kitchen sink and you're going to put a plug in the sink or even the bathtub would be fine. Fill um, the sink or the tub with about three to four inches of water and make sure it's not too hot. And then you're going to put the plant inside of that water and allow it to soak up for maybe about half hour to 45 minutes. Allow it to soak up as much as it can. And the water may go all the way to the top of the soil. If not, you can um, add just a little bit of water to the top. Make sure that it's a little bit wet, not too, too much on top if you're watering it from the bottom. And then I want you to drain that three to four inches of water from the sink or the tub and let your plants sit there for just a little bit to make sure that any excess is going to be removed before you put the plant 
back into the container it was in, your ceramic pot, your basket, whatever. One thing we do know about the Sansevieria is that it doesn't like wet feet. What that means is it doesn't like to sit in its own pool of water for too, too long. That is one sure way that it can get ruined and it can um, probably die on you. So we don't want to, we want to avoid that. The other way that you can water your plant is to put it into the sink, put it into the tub, and you can top water it and you will pour water into that pot until you start seeing water come out of the drainage holes And not just any water, but until it starts running clear. And once it starts running clear, it might take two water bottles, we'll say, full before it starts running clear. Once it starts running clear, stop watering it. And then you can leave it in the tub, leave it in the sink until all of the excess water gets removed so that we don't have wet feet again. And then put it back into your pot. Just like with any plants, you might see some problems. And here are the ones that are probably most common with the Sansevieria. The first one is overwatering it. So like I mentioned before, and I kind of giggled about it, that it really thrives on neglect. It truly does. (laughs) This is one of those that is harder to kill than it is to keep alive. So if you think that it's time to water, maybe check your calendar. Maybe check and have you watered it recently in the last week, two weeks, three weeks? It's not time yet. So Overwatering is probably the number one way that you can kill your plant, and we don't want to do that. So remember, longer is better. Another one of the problems that you might see is that the blades start turning yellow. Those sward blades that kind of poke up at the sky, if they start turning yellow, it could be an indicator that there's too much water. Or if they get soggy from the bottom of the, of the blade, it could be too much water. So cut back. Another problem that you could see is that those blades start curling in on themselves, and that could be that it's not getting enough water. Maybe you have left for six months and you've forgotten about it. Give it a drink, and then maybe try watering it sooner than you did the last time. Another type of problem that you could see, and it's not really a problem, but is that if it starts leaning a little bit, it starts leaning and if look at the direction of the way that the leaves are leaning and if those leaves are leaning towards light it might be craving a little bit more light maybe move it out of that dark location give it a little bit of dose of sunlight and see if it's happier and straighter in a new location all right crystal i hope that those tips are helpful i know that you're going to do just fine with this plant and i wish you all the best don't forget to send me a picture and tag me over on Instagram at Fig and Farm so we can wish you all the luck with your new plant baby. And don't forget, if you have a question that you want answered on the show, pop into my DMs on Instagram at Fig and Farm, send me an email, figandfarm at gmail.com, or join the Facebook group, bit.ly forward slash design 101 group. Once I'm done with all these questions in my queue, We're done with Quick Tip Tuesday. So make sure if you have a question that you want answered, pop on in because we want to have that conversation. All right, girls, until next time, I'll see you soon.